uh, bathroom break in between second and third. He's like, I saw that. I thought this is going to be a problem. And it was a problem. So I couldn't. I got to the bathroom. Here's this guy looking at my dick. You know, we're just, you know, we're just in this. You guys got to do it. Yeah. And I'm like, you, you impressed? <laughs> UCLA is wild. Anybody gets a nerd. We did, yeah, literally. Free for all. Yeah, Billy Martin's like, you have a forehand, you're good, man. You have a forehand, you're fine. I wouldn't have gotten in then. <laughs> What's up, people? Welcome back to Change Over Podcast. Uh, I'm Justin Roberts. Next to me, I got Jordy McGinley. Far to the other side is Evan Zhu. Before we get started, uh, don't forget we have a deal with Pro Stringer. So if you are a friend of the Pro Stringer, a thing you can take on the road with you, have at home, use our code at the checkout, change over, you get $100 off, save money with the code, save money with uh, tournament stringing. Great deal for you, for sure. Secondly, we are trying to reach 1,000 subscribers on YouTube by the end of March. So if you like anything you see on this channel, please hit that subscribe button. Keep liking, keep sharing. Tell a friend, tell a friend, and we'll grow. And yes, today we've got a, a guest in the house. This man has a pretty interesting career so far. <laughs> Junior Wimbledon champion. 2015 NCAA singles champion. Finalist. Finalist, sorry, sorry, sorry. How about? No, I love it, I love it. This is perfect, this is perfect. NCAA 2015 <laughs> finalist. Few, few points away. Career high 125 in the world. The creator of the Behind the Racket series on the website on Instagram. Probably the first tennis player with a podcast, I would assume, with the Behind the Racket podcast. We said some crazy stuff in there we just, we just found <laughs> out. Um, if you don't know him from any of these things, you've probably seen him as a tennis TV blooper when his shoe blew up against John Isner. We have no Ruben in the house. Thanks for having me, guys. It's going to be a journey, isn't it? It's going to be a journey. What's up guys? I'm here to talk to you about the new IPN tennis circuit that's launching this year. It's going to be a tennis circuit held in Southern Africa from January to December with tournaments in South Africa, Namibia, Botswana, Mozambique. The first tournament is actually going to be held in Harare, Zimbabwe. Registration for that opens on January 7th. Go to IPN.tennis to check it out and sign up for the tournament as well as all the other tournaments during the year. It's a great opportunity to get matches in and to meet some awesome people. They are all prize money tournaments, meaning if you win the first round, you're guaranteed some money. For you guys who like dingles, there's going to be dingles at the tournament with prize money for the winners. All right. Format is going to be best of three sets, but super tiebreak in the third set, no act. I hope to see you guys at the IPN tournaments and have a great 2024. And before we get started, we're going to play a game actually. Oh, oh this is the part we didn't warn you about. We're going to do things differently today. So everybody grab a whiteboard. Also, how? Oh, everybody grab a whiteboard. Everybody yeah. grab a whiteboard. It's gonna be you, well, so Evan. How are you with cursing? Sometimes it just comes out. No, nah, let it go, man. Yeah. Let it go. Be yourself. Oh, sorry. Okay. You, you don't want that. I promise <laughs> you, you don't want that. Okay. So, we're gonna have five tennis questions, tennis Ooh. trivia, random. Tennis Af trivia? After each question, we're gonna see who answers what. We're gonna track the score. And if there's a clear winner and then we have some people tied, we'll have one I don't random. I really know my own matches. It's all good like, though. We'll have, <laughs> we'll have one random question okay. to, to break Decide the tie. It all. Okay. Yes? So we, we write the answer and then we say the answer after the... We turn it over. Every guessing. round. Yeah, sure. Yeah. That's fine. All right. What is the second largest stadium by capacity in professional tennis? Second largest? Second largest. <sighs> Arthur Ashe is the largest yeah. and the second largest is which one? Look at my answer, I'll kill you. <laughs> uh, I'm going to give you guys actually, why, uh, 10 more seconds to lock that one in. Oof, oof. I'm writing this so small. Like, I'm... We locked? No, yeah. no, no, no. Should I, I should write this. I don't even... Whatever. This guy's wasting our Three. time over here. Two, one, guy wrote the mark us down, mark us down. I'm good, I'm yeah, ready, I'm Evan ready. Never Evan Zoo, what's that answer over there, baby? <laughs> Louis Armstrong. That's, no, that's, that's a not. wild <laughs> That's a wild He picked that's a second it. stadium no, at a place? No. 
<laughs> no. I couldn't spell the. What's the Australian Open one? Sus- Sus- Rod Laver. Oh, that one's Rod Laver. Susan Lung is in France, my brother. That's also the second largest one over there. <laughs> What you got? The- nah, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. It's, it's all good. It's all good. I picked IW center court. And that is correct. Jordy McGinley, what did you pick? I was taking shots. Oh, really? Indian Wells? I put where no one else fair. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> is it IW? It's Indian Wells. Wow. So that's oh. 1 0 0. Question two. If you're going to rip me, you better get it right next time. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> Question two. How many ATP 1000s are there? This is the easiest question. I don't uh, have to write it down. I'm off one number. There's one. How in the world, brother? How many oh, ATP one thousand? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know any of these. God, UC, you, UCLA is wild. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody gets in there? We did, <laughs> yeah, literally free for all. Yeah, Billy Martin's like, you have a forehand, you're good, man. You have a forehand, you're fine. I wouldn't have gotten in then. <laughs> all right, we lock. Uh, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. Nah, Evan, take his time. Number, bro. Were know. you a good student over there or no? Not really. All uh, right, Evan, give me the answer. 17. That's what? That's wrong. That's extremely wrong. I could have Masters 1000? And you don't watch tennis? No. No. This is my guess. <laughs> 12. Wrong. It is 9. Correct. Oh, Jordy has it's one. 9? Damn. Jordy has little. one. Damn. Didn't you? You know what? I'll stop. <laughs> it's too early in the podcast. I'm so sorry. Is it too early? You, so you're going to get ripped next. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, yeah. You better. No, I'm, 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 I'm ready. Come on. I was right. going to say, you should know you played a few, didn't you? Yeah, but only a few. I'm guessing the rest. You didn't play all 13. <laughs> you play four, and then you guess there's 90 more. I don't know. I'm fucking... Okay, yeah, I mean, okay, this guy okay. said 17, so he's not the worst. <laughs> Question number three. Who won Brisbane International 250 this year? You guys don't watch tennis? Good. No. I love it. <laughs> Who won Brisbane? Brisbane. People care? No chance. I like this. This is for the, for the content. You got nothing? What Give level is Brisbane? 250. He even said it. <laughs> <laughs> Evan definitely fair yeah, classes yeah, yeah, yeah. at UCLA. Give me, give, me, give me 10 seconds on this one. I'll give you 15 if you need it, man. Oh. Evan got that right, I feel like. We did no... I can't give you no hints, brother. I'm sorry. This no. year? This year? Yeah, 2024. Why do I feel like... I thought Novak played, but maybe I'm wrong. I'm like so lost. I think I watched tennis. <laughs> Put on UTR stream on Amazon. That's it. You would answer? I'll give you five seconds. No. Ugh. Five. Oh, no. Change you, it. You know? What? I think. I'm being a very bad quiz master right now. All right, let's go. Time yeah. Five seconds. Yeah. Five. Throw one now. Four. Three. Two. One. Evan, hit me. The minor, the demon. False. I. Tenasi Kokonakis. Way off. <laughs> What's crazy is I wrote Dimitrov and I crossed it out for Demino. <laughs> the answer oh! is Dimitrov. I is know. It? That's so bad. That's so bad. Did Djokovic play a warm up tournament? That's I think so it was bad. Him. I don't think he did. So if you guys don't watch ATP 250s, What's you definitely score? don't watch WTA. What? I mean, it's <laughs> because, because the next, the next, the next, next question. Is, Justin, what is, is that supposed to mean? <laughs> The next question is, who won Brisbane International title for the women in 2024? I just hope they got the same prize money. That's all I hope. Brother, That's we can fuck that. That's Brother. good. Save yourself early. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give you guys 10 seconds. Five. Four. I don't like this game. Three. No, this is... Two. This is definitely wrong. One. Evan? Sabalenka. No. Coco Golf. No. Pliskova? <laughs> no, we don't support. <laughs> oh. These guys do not watch women's tennis. They do not support the game. We don't watch men's tennis either. Yeah, apparently. we don't watch tennis. <laughs> well, also, nobody watches 250. And that's tennis. the issue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the tennis players are not even. What's the score, bro? This is the last tennis question. What's it's 1 1. 1 1. No, for us. no, no, Jody. Evan is <laughs> Evan's just happy to be here. Is this one worth two? This one, this one is no, the, no, no, the no, last no, question no, no, is, a, no. is a un, unrelated tennis. This, oh, this is the last tennis question. Unrelated. Since you guys can't get tennis questions right, um, spell Van de Sanschulp. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. Botic's last name Van de Sanschulp. Does it? Okay. Van. <laughs> Can you use it as a sentence, please? <laughs> his name is Botic yeah. Van de Sanschulp. Do you mind if I just do his first name? <laughs> this is wild. <laughs> don't look, don't look, don't look. I got one letter in there. 
I'm putting my pen down because last Can time. Can you pronounce the name again? <laughs> you want it, Mojo? Yes. Van de Zanschulp. Yeah, it's great with the freaking Bohemian <sighs> accent over here. It's really good. No, no, he lived in in, in the Holland for a couple years. That's how you say it. So you actually know the language yeah, a little bit. Yeah, with a little Bohemian right. in there. A little, little something in it. Oh right. We got it? No. We're Spe- going to play a tiebreak after this. Spell and be time. I want you to spell that out for me, Evan. Who's first? first? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. V A N D S. What did I even write? You went, you, you went, you, no, no, let him, let him finish, let him finish, let him, let him, let him, let him drown in this one. A N S C H U L P. So, first of all, you went all one word. Crazy. Yeah, oh, wait, okay. I didn't know we were going. I don't know if we're I went Van Schlup. I, I, the middle was not happening in okay. this lifetime. You tight. Is that. <laughs> Was that good on both sides? Did I at least get the sandwich part of it? The van is good. The is <laughs> if not. you would have switched the, it should have been the L and the U should be switched. But anyway, Jordy, let me. I think he should switch his. Yeah, like I that think so too. <laughs> Let's see that, Jordy. It looks like I fucked it too. So it goes V A N D E Z A N S C U P. Yeah. Okay, that, okay, that okay. looks the best though. It's yeah, the closest. It looks, that looks the best. <laughs> but there's no. Um, All right, let's just get to the points. Out. Let's get to the tie so break. Jordy and know. Noah, tie break. I don't know why we're I kind of want him to play because it's fun. Does this count as two? I want him to see what he does. <laughs> yeah, he fine. really brings the worst to the table. <laughs> okay, okay. Put the mic close to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry. All right, then. We can do this one for three points, and the winner, yeah. winner, winner takes it. Two points. Two no points. points. Yeah, yeah, two yeah. points. Right? Two points. Winner takes it. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good yeah, yeah. math. Wait, wait, wait. What's the format here? We write No, the first one to answer. First one to answer. First one to answer gets it. Okay, let me mark it. First correct answer wins. Bro, I'm sweating, Yes, first correct answer wins. You know I'm sweating, actually. First correct answer wins. No writing down. Okay, no writing down. Okay, we just unless you need it to work it out. Yeah, no, just go. Let's let's it's a math problem. <laughs> it? Oh, it is. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> what is the answer to seven times six minus three? Thirty-nine. Thirty-nine. Evan Zoo gets the dub. <laughs> let's go. Goes zero for five. <laughs> This is the last time we're playing games on this podcast. Last I had the three out. I couldn't even last get. Last time. Oh god. Then we have to like make fun of ethnic groups, and then it's like. Really bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, I thought you were joking when you said math question. Why would you do that? You know I was not gonna get that answer. That's exactly why. <laughs> Messed up. That's good. Now my heart rate's at like one twenty. Yeah. Now we're ready to park. Ready to start talking though. So do it. Hey guys, quick break. Justin here from The Changeover. I'm gonna talk about Pro Stringer. It's a great machine that I use, Jody uses, and a lot of other pros use as well. You can use it at home, on the road, really anywhere there's a tabletop surface. It takes me about 25, 30 minutes to string a racket on this machine. It is easy to travel with, fits in carry-on, suitcase, tennis bag, no issues at TSA. It's a big money saver, and you can save even more when you use our code CHANGEOVER to get $100 off the machine. Back to the episode. Noah, <laughs> so how's the comeback so far? You, what did you play? Portugal to start to Portugal and then yeah, snuck into saw you in Portugal the... was a 50. Then right after was Indian Wells, 50. Okay. Future in uh, Saddlebrook, Cha- yep. Yeah, Westy Chapel. And then, oh, then Cleveland. And that was my last four. So playing uh, the UTR this week, which are... Just a boatload of fun, man. Just, the just UTR. glorious, man. It's so much fun playing 16-year-olds <laughs> that just want to kick the shit out of you and have no pressure. And then the ball changes is 9-11, and by the eighth game, you can't feel your arm. It's, it's really, it's good. It's really fun. But is the reason for playing the PTT matches? Or Yeah. It's, uh, the schedule sucks. The beginning of the year has been really bad. Um, so after I played Cleveland, I actually got more matches than I thought I would in January, so it was fine. But yeah, when I was looking at the schedule... You know, I was trying to use my, my Jewish roots to get a wild card to Del Rey. That's crazy. <laughs> that didn't, that That's crazy. That using didn't the, happen. Using the conflict to get, yeah. so to get a wild card. Yeah, I was like, crazy. hey, Ivan, like it's Noah. Like, you know, I could bring my grandparents out and the rest of them. But um, yeah, it didn't happen this one. So yeah, so midway through, I was like, shit, like I don't know what I'm going to do. And I'm actually getting married exactly a month from today oh, no, so i want to get a few yeah. more matches in um honeymoon mid-season or are you gonna do that later that was so i actually was going to start my comeback in april okay and then my wonderful fiance said just play like what are you waiting for like don't worry about it and we'll take some time off but the one 
compromise what she wanted the honeymoon mid mid year. Nice. So take a little extra time off, but it's fine. Honestly, I probably need a quick break anyway, just to breathe again. Um, but yeah, there's no tournaments. Um, and it was great to <laughs> sign up for the future in Santo Domingo, which I'm going to next year, or next week. Next week. <laughs> and, <laughs> and seeing a 320 cutoff was the initial list. So that was exciting. So I was like, okay, I got to play a tournament before this. And yeah. saw the UTR. And I oh, so the good. reason for the UTR is because you saw the I saw it was tough. I just wanted matches. And, you know, God forbid, like, you know, play Tomic first round. He pulled out. But, like, you play in first round, you know, you know yeah. that's a tough first yeah, round. You know, he had a 25K and... Wonderful Santo Domingo, and you know, you go down, you're there a week, you're like, shoot, I have one match under my belt. Like, we needed a couple more, so I have family here. It was easy, stay here, get a few extra, guaranteed. Yeah, we were in Champagne, and the last year when we heard people talking about they're having less tournaments in the US this year, like, USTA decided to have even less tournaments, so, and especially at the beginning of the year when there's already not many tournaments to begin with. Like, there's been only, what, one challenge? Or I guess they had the 50s. Yeah, the 50s. But then Cleveland's the only challenge that they had in the U.S., and it's yeah. March now. So The 50s were weirdly a pleasant surprise. I thought they were going to be much tougher than they were. Luckily, they, they were actually okay, and people snuck in. Because um, I thought they were actually just an excuse to pay people less, mm -hmm. which it actually may end up happening, where, like, the cutoffs end up being looking like an 80k or 100 exactly. which i actually think could happen based on the schedule this one just didn't so it was fine but yeah i mean usc coming out and saying that like professional tennis is not a way to grow american tennis is like fuck uh, okay yeah. like, yeah, yeah, like, <laughs> what, like what do you say to that you know and you know you get certain aspects of it but that's brutal like we already didn't have tournaments and like my point of view is like if there's a slam going on yeah. i mean you know, there's so much more to go into. I mean, it's the biggest country in the world. Like, how do we not have a West Coast and East Coast tournament every week? It's besides the point. Take a step back. If there's a slam going on, automatically, two tournaments back to back. Yeah. You have to. Have to. If there's for the players that are not in the qualifying and the main draw, you have to have tournaments for them in the U.S. I mean, that's just a must. So it's like not see a U.S. tournament all the way down to, I believe, a 15 for the first two weeks of the year. It's like, well, what the fuck are we doing? Yeah. You know? I don't know. It was... I, I heard in the... What was it? Michigan. The, I, one of the officials in Michigan were telling me that they wanted to host... Because they had, at the time, a 15 and a 25. And this was in 2022. And in 23, they wanted to host both futures again. Okay. And USTA said no to them. To the 25. This is what they said to me. I don't know if it's true or not, but they said have a reason or? because I guess referees like they didn't. The USA didn't want to supply the referees, or I, I don't okay, really that's know. A but wild, that's wild. But that's what I, f I found it crazy because like if the futures. First of all, the Michigan State futures is one of the best futures that I've played. Yeah. Like they treat the players very good. So if they wanted to have the tournament and they have the money, why wouldn't how do you say no to have anything? the tournament? Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Again, you know, you always. You could just bank on certain tournaments. They had the Florida Futures that were there. Uh, Michigan, actually University of Michigan, not Michigan State, had the Challenger there the first week of the year, one year. Yeah. You just knew, like, when I was talking to some, I was hitting with uh, Bruno Kuzahara during mm -hmm. the off season, And I was like, oh, what are you playing? He's like, oh, I'm not going to play until, like, the third week of the year, which was the Indian Wells. And I'm like, it's just crazy. Like, that's wild to start the year three weeks in. People are already, like could be five to seven mat you know you don't know yeah, it's exactly. like you're, you're you feel like you're starting behind especially me like i started i always start really well at the beginning of the year and you get excited it's a new year you know new year new me bullshit you know like, <laughs> this is all gonna be different and it never is but you know january always feels great and then you know to have these guys like you know feeling okay about starting january 15th i was like that's just that's the third week of the year like yeah. that's so bad and and if you're saying that people were open to like putting their own money up and they yeah, were yeah, saying exactly. no like, that's just, I mean, that's point proven that they're not even willing to put the bare minimum effort in. Yeah. I mean, I don't even know. I wish they would have at least released a statement as to what the plan is, you know, because if... The plan? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, they don't. It's just professional tennis is not in the plan. So, yeah. they, you know, they're going to work with what they have. Um, I think Oracle was was a really bad hit for them early on. Yeah. Um, that That kind of changed everything, you know... After after the passing, um, they just they just didn't know what to do. You know, Larry Ellison at that point was like, "We're we're good with Indian Wells and kind of that's it," and didn't really see, um, you know, the future of what you know could be the ground up kind of version of tennis. 
And then USA is like, oh shit, now now it's back on us, yeah. you know. And I think that was kind of a shell shock, where that was the initial round of them thinking they were going to have twenty to twenty five, fifty Ks, and that was going to be a game changer. That was going to be kind of the new system. And then when they said no, you know, then it was what it's not Tristan Boyd and you know his father or whatever trying to put money in. And it's just <laughs> coming out of left field, but yeah, there is no pathway right now. Yeah. There really so wait, isn't. so they were supposed to have a bunch of fifties. Oracle, I guess, yes. was going to put up the money to have all the fifties at first. Yes. Yeah. And they, then that was like right around COVID, and I am totally blanking the guys. Yeah, yeah. we played um, that Vegas. Passed away. Yeah. Is it Heard? Heard. Yes. Ryan Heard? Thank you. Um, and he you was me. the one that had the vision for American tennis. Yeah. We're gonna, you know, make sure there's tournaments. Once he passed. There was really nobody, there's no predecessor there to kind of take those reins and say, hey, we're going to make sure this happens. And then USA didn't really have anything. And then, you know, especially, and then the plus H was implemented yeah. for the challengers and that money doubled and people, you know, just like couldn't find that. You know, you had Carrie that was, you know, making do somehow, finding, you know, sponsors, but, you know, these... USC wouldn't put it up, but now that you're telling me that there's places that that had sponsors, <laughs> yeah. and, and we're USC's good, like, we're good, we're okay, yeah, 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 we're, we're good. Yeah, you Honestly, do, you're we, doing too much. You know, we, we looked at the schedule. Yeah. There's almost too many tournaments. Don't try, don't try <laughs> so, so hard. Right? Yeah. But I agree with the the East Coast and West Coast thing because you go to Europe mm-hmm. and you see that you can drive an hour away cross a border to another country Portugal's and they putting have, on 50 events a year like the size of Florida yeah. like let's, let's just like move but on I'm not even talking about Portugal alone like but like from country to country oh, you can sure, drive across yeah. a border to Train. another country yeah but I'm just saying these these places are managing to put on tournaments that are the size of single states that we have in this yeah. country how do we not have 75 yeah, yeah it just like it just doesn't make sense to me it really doesn't and it's it doesn't seem that difficult but again you're he already came in the, in the house today upset and yeah, you just yeah, you yeah. added man i'm from new york what do you want from me fuel to, fuel to the fire <laughs> outside for me already it's like what do you want so um at what point in your tennis career because we're gonna go i guess we'll start off eventually and go from the ground up but at what point in the career did you get uh i don't know if passionate is the word or like like invested in this kind of stuff with tennis like with oh with like the whew. yeah with like the, the tour system in general and the structure and, yeah yeah, yeah i think stuff. that was when i hit my career high ranking that's when i hit like actually right before that i hit like the darkest depression of my career um lost like eight matches so i won a challenge at the beginning of the year in numia lost eight matches in a row kind of mid-year and like eight matches in a row for people that don't know that's like a long time yeah. you know that's like a so few at months least, uh, at least two months like, two, yeah <laughs> at and, least and, and i didn't play that many tournaments so it's like three and a half months for me. <laughs> yeah so i'm like texting my girlfriend like i can't play tennis you know like literally can't strike a ball um and then um so really depressed and i, I kind of had a breakthrough right after that where i needed two matches at the tallahassee challenger to qualify for the french open just to get into qualies. And I ended, and it was a really tough draw. I played Cope for first round, Oof. down set points in the first set, beat him. And then it was Kudla second round. It's rough. And then I ended up actually winning the tournament. I got a wild card to Maine and then it kind of kickstarted again. Um, and then after that summer, I, I had a good summer, broken shoe. Fucking, if I hear that story one more time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's great. I only played one match in my career. Flip flops. Yeah. <laughs> They don't even tag me in the fucking posts on Tennis TV. That's crazy. It's, it's an Isner clip. Yeah, it's yeah. The, guy, the guy who played Isner, who is that? Yeah. Why every time on Tennis TV, they only post the person who wins the point, never the person who loses yeah. the point. We didn't even point. play a point. It broke my shoe. Like, Isner's what? opponent broke yeah. his shoe. <laughs> Some guy over there broke his shoe. <laughs> so, I got to my career high after that. I was playing good ball. And then played... Tibron, Tibron Challenger, great challenger, probably great one of the best. Yeah. And I think I either it was quarters or semis. I want to say quarters that I lost in, and I was just like, "The fuck am I doing?" Like, <laughs> like I put in so many matches. I have to, I have to work hard every match. I mean, you know, I don't have the size. I'm not acing guys off the court here, so I'm like grinding my ass off. And I just, like, after a really good summer. I was just like, I just lost in the quarters of a challenger and like nothing. I need another two challengers to get to top 100 titles on top of what I already have to get to top 100. Like, I have so much more to go. This sucks. Like, this, I have to put in so much effort. And that's where, like, 
I, I've spoke, you know, like Bradley Klon did it where you like, you sneak to Korea for like five weeks and see what you can do and try to like make that last jump. And I wish, I wish I would have pushed past it, but I was in no state of mind. And that was kind of where I started opening that book and peeling back the curtain and being like, what's actually going on in the sport? Like, does anybody make money? Is anybody happy playing this sport? <laughs> and, um, and that was it that from there on. Um, so that was the end of 2018 and then 2019, I started behind the racket. It was like, or it was the thought was after Australia in January. And then I got back home and then, yeah. And then it led to behind the racket and everything else. So it wasn't the worst thing in the world, but that was when I started really understanding like, holy shit, this sport is. So basically it was problems. like, you were feeling that you were doing really well. And, and you I didn't were, you have anything. To show no, it. no reward. Yeah. I had no yeah. reward because hey, you're not really winning tournaments every week. So you don't get trophies. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I made good money that summer, but like, I didn't, I was spending a lot of money. I was spending a lot. That was one of the first time I had coaches with me that I was spending personally on uh, physios as well, back home, some on the road. And I'm looking and I'm like, I mean, I should have like yeah. 750 grand in my bank. And like, I have like 65 grand. It's and it was just like, and I know that's going to go next year. And if I don't do as well, like that's gone. Like that, that was tough. I think Justin asked a question in the COVID episode uh, last year. It's like, People already think about, like, the better you get, it's also more expensive things are because then now you're going to say, okay, let me reinvest some of the money I'm making back into my career. Now I can afford a coach on the road. So then the coach on the road is going to come and take up some of the money that you I wasn't make. even it's there, not, bro. No, but you, you helped us write the, oh, the good. format. Brother. But I would say, and I would say to that, like, that ranking point that I was at, like that 110 to 130 range is, like, the worst range for what you're talking about because you're not guaranteed main draw slams yet, yeah, so you don't yeah, have that guarantee, exactly. but you're, you're a main draw slam player in your head, mm -hmm. but, you have, but you don't have that money yet. Yeah. So like I'm putting that money in as if like I gotta get there, but I don't have it. And it's not, it's not, it's not certain guaranteed. that, yeah. Exactly. It's a gamble. It's a, it's a full gamble. So at that point, I actually didn't gamble enough. But yeah, you, you have to gamble though, right? Cause then you'd be like, oh, what if I, you have to do everything you can to try and push past. Yeah, if you don't play, if you don't yeah. play, you can't win. Yeah. I wish somebody came up to me and said, like, you know, you could get back here eventually, which is, you know, why I'm here playing again. But like, this could be your one chance. Yeah. Like, go all in. Like, fuck it. Like, go for it. And if you come out with, you know, fifty grand in debt, like, so be it. But this was your chance, and I wish I had a little bit more of that push from somebody that just told me like this is it so it's a it's funny because it's two things like one maybe you felt on one hand you're more conservative so that's in your control like what you decide to do sure but on the other other side you were unhappy with the system to know that you're playing a high level uh high level of tennis you are just outside the top 100 but you felt like you had nothing to show for it and it was two challenger wins to get to where you want to be like i was just tired yeah i was just tired I mean, that's what it came down. It was a long year. I put a lot of matches in. And you know that feeling where it's like, fuck. <laughs> like, I, I got to I gotta do everything again. Yeah. You know, and it's I have like to make sure. It, it was a lot. It was a lot at that point. And I was like, I just don't have it in me. My body was, it wasn't even a mess. I was just tired of waking up and, you know, doing the same shit and like trying to get my body to feel okay. And then go out and, you know, serve two aces every four matches <laughs> just like shit like 30 ball rallies yeah i was like god like on a good day i remember playing coconacas in atlanta i came out with like six aces and i was like like going through the fans like, <laughs> like we did it baby living in slow motion like this it. is it i was like holy shit is this what these guys feel like <laughs> Like I basically, I didn't even try this match. I didn't even have to try. I got six aces. But yeah, it was. I was exhausted. Six free points, man. Six free points. Yeah. So again, I wish somebody came up to me and been like, "This is it. Go for it. You're you're never gonna have this chance again." But it you is think what you could have at that point though, or would it have been like a mental, like emotional thing that could have put you in the in the ground? Yeah, but I, and this is somebody that's been a part of mental health, like. I still would have liked to try yeah. even going back and seeing because I wasn't quite as dark as a space as it was in those, you know, eight losses in a row, but I was exhausted, tired, down, but like, 
I think I could have put it in. You think that's part of why you're back now? Because you feel like if you get to that point again and then you make a different decision this time, maybe the result will be different? Yeah. I mean, uh, there's a lot of reasons that I'm looking at this sport differently. Like I coach juniors. I feel different. I'm seeing the game differently. But yes, I mean, I think, you know, if I roll my ankle too good, you know, if I just don't play good tennis, like too good. But I want to give myself a chance to be back in that position and make different decisions and be back in, you know, even... Just knowing how I've done things in the past, like small things, like when I won a tournament, I've never won a match after winning a tournament where like tennis is a very big momentum based sport. Like that's how guys like get into the top hundred is they either sneak eight matches in a row at a slam or they get three challenges in a row or something. And I, because it was so physical, I was never able to, but like, shit, like maybe I should have got nine massages that day. Yeah. You know, just put like 10 grand out and just like so have what, somebody work on my body for 10 hours. So the, yeah. would the change then be you pay more attention to your body during that week or then do you take one week off and then go the, the week after? Both? Something? Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a good question. I mean, it, it really depends. It depends ranking based. You know, uh, I, I actually just spoke to Jamie Loeb about this. She just, she's been struggling, but she just won like a 40K. We don't have 40s, but it was basically our 50. And I told her, I was like, go, like go f- play anything right now yeah. like just use that momentum she's like body's tired i was like yeah that's fine like you're gonna be tired but like i think you just have to use the momentum sneak the first tough match like the first match of the tournament's always difficult and then you just play because I, I just look at these guys um that have made it and they just can put like a win final two quarters and they're like they're there and just you just have to push through and i think i almost think there's no other way to do it in tennis at this point yeah that's it's hard. I feel like when you win a tournament, you're the least prepared guy for the next tournament. Like Jordan Thompson wins and Los Cabos shows up to Acapulco probably late night, comes in, has to play Kova, who's also a very good player. Like yeah. you're the least prepared guy to actually make that run. So you Same have to be... Jari and... Uh, who do you play in the final? Uh, Jari... Diaz Acosta. Fi- yeah, Diaz Acosta. Yeah, yeah. yeah, for sure. So it's like... Yeah, you, you got to be tough. <laughs> yeah. You have to hope and this is and this is where like it didn't work for me as much. Um <laughs> like some people think I'm overly arrogant, like I don't have that all the time when I'm playing, but like you see those guys at title, they come out mm. to the next tournament like they're the fucking like they're yeah. fed. Yeah. And like you have to do that to get through like the first two matches and then once you're back in the quarters again, then you you can find your way through like I just titled last week like they manage that, but it's just this like ultra confidence that like getting it's through going those, to those work gutsy out. matches, those awkward. When it gets to a yeah. deuce point and, or a break point, they're like, "Fuck, I did that twelve times last week. Like, I'm fine. Let me just go slider wide, do my thing, call yeah. it out." But <laughs> <laughs> you know, but like, yeah, that's it's it's not e- it's just not easy. Yeah, it's just not easy. Okay, so going back to your upbringing, so what at what age or what I guess grade? Did you start to take tennis seriously? Because you were, I know you went to Laurel Springs at one point, but (laughs) what grade was that when you started Laurel Springs? So that was, that was 10th grade, sophomore in high school. Um, So I did public school for ninth grade, my freshman year of high school. I missed about two and a half, three months. I was was playing a decent amount of ITFs and they just basically sat me down and said like, we we can't do this anymore. (laughs) Yeah, we just- kick you out? Yeah. I was like, I would love to be a part of this. They're like, we don't really care. (laughs) I was like, okay, I guess I'm not supporting this. Um, But uh, yeah, I mean, it was probably pretty early on, um, you know, everybody has a coach that comes up and is like, you're good at tennis. They're like, thanks, you know, but it's not, (laughs) you know, it's not until you like show something. and I started working with the USTA a little bit. I went there at times, but I was still mostly in New York. Um, I played this like international tournament that like we base it as the world championships called Coupe LeBlanc. But, um, you know, I was in Canada. They try to bring some of the best players around the world that age, but we're so young. Um, Danny Kurz was the player that okay. I DK. played. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to him. We played, we won doubles together. I won singles. Taylor Townsend was there. She won singles. Um, Brooke Austin was another yeah she was there so you know at that point you're like shit like i'm playing some international players like must be okay and then it was la Petitas was like the real tournament that like people knew about yeah. and um i i finaled got absolutely humiliated in the finals by quinton alice hysterically crying you should look up that video um <laughs> well, that video playing right yeah, video of just me in tears <laughs> looking at these french guys like what the fuck am i doing here <laughs> one and one um 
but yeah, when I got back from that, I was like, okay, like this is something I stopped playing soccer, which was one of, I mean, arguably like my favorite sport still. Um, Bro, quick. Yeah. I think I remember this man at Eddie Hur under 18 oh, on a changeover spinning the soccer ball. Wait, Every change over, he what would mean spin a soccer ball. I mean, I this match? man is playing matches. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> sit it's crazy. Sit it. <laughs> this man making up stuff. Dog would be sitting on the sideline in between changeovers. I don't know, man. On the changeover. <laughs> And he would be spinning the soccer ball. He'd bro. take the ball out and start spinning it. Every every changeover, though. What would he do? <laughs> Who did this? You. <laughs> okay. So quick side story. Not uh, he, you. Yeah, I I traveled it for a bit, and then like for a second, like the ball fell in my bag, like a tournament before or something. It might have been Tulsa, uh, the ITF in Tulsa, and I like spun it once just for fun. I was like. Hmm, this like kind of chilled me out a little bit. Like okay. I was kind of relaxed, and then here I am playing Eddie Hur. I'm going three sets every match, and I'm playing Filippo. <laughs> yeah. I'm playing Filippo Baldi. Baldi. Okay. Yeah, and I, I, I went six in the third, and I'm like deep in the third, spinning this ball because I have to. I'm sick, <laughs> up. and I'm like nearly cramping in my forearm trying to spin this ball in my finger, <laughs> and then lose to, <laughs> lose to uh, Yimmer like six and four in the quarters of semis. <laughs> Okay. That's funny. Though. That's I remember wild. that. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, dark, dark times. So I threw you off track there, but I yeah, had but to. Yeah, I so had I came to. back from Labadee. Quit in soccer, and then what? What was next? <laughs> Do love soccer. So that was that was a turning point when I had to stop. I was lying to my coach a little bit. He like saw like mud in my shins and stuff. He's like, "Do you play a game right now?" I was like, "Nah." <laughs> nah, that wasn't got a me. shower, bro. Wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> we were like always late, you know, like dead sprinting and stuff, like one cleat on, and, like looking like an idiot. But um, yeah, so once I made that final decision, and then, then like yeah, fourteen was like a real turning point. That's when I like became a tennis player, um, because when when fifteen rolled around, it was on my fifteenth birthday that I qualified for my first future. It, I fifteen. Fifteen. Dog. Yeah. I might have qualified for the first time at like 22, 21. <laughs> 21. Let him tell a story. I'm like really happy for us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go on, go on. Just like take a moment and sound. My bad. <laughs> Let's regroup. My bad. I'm so sorry. Uh, so, so qualified. Uh, my 15th birthday. Yeah, yeah. But then. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, yeah, so I got a wild card to um, Tulsa ITF. So that was like my, that was my first ITF, I think. I might have played one at Everett because they just let players play. Mm. Um Yvonne Dang, I think I play. Is that Yvonne Dang with the... Oh, oh that's this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dang. Uh, this guy just like, yeah, the guy hit a winner on me like this. I was like, okay, thanks. So, yeah, um, but yeah, so I got a, a wild card to that one. <laughs> Mitchell Polnett, size story again, uh, showed up late to the match and got defaulted. So that was like one of my first points. Mitchell Polnett. Apparently, like, overdose Wait, on, like, someone, sleeping meds. We take, we take a free point anytime free we can get guy. it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so he showed up. And I was, like, asking to play. I was like, I don't care. Like, I haven't played a match. I want to play. You're like, crazy for that. just can't do it. It's been 45 minutes. So, like, whatever. 45 um, minutes? Yeah. You waited 45 I would have been in a hotel already. I would have been in a nap, bro. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that clock is 15. I'm Under the saying. covers. <laughs> We're like, yeah, we my we third no dream, but I'm just waiting for the supervisor to circle my <laughs> yeah, name. I'm just like, make sure it says two and two, right? You're like, hey, give me a score on that. Um, the UTR points. <laughs> but I, um, I, I played well. I didn't know anything about ITFs, and I finaled. I lost to Mitchell Kruger in the finals, and I didn't know really what an ITF was. I didn't know what that tournament meant at that time. Was a close. G1B, whatever they called it at that point, yeah. Yeah. which is different. They, I think they still have closed ITFs now. Um, so I just like looked online and saw myself at like 300 in the world, like in one week. And I was like, oh shit, like this is real. And I was 15 and then um, one, co still one of my favorite events, even counting men's events, like to this day is Copa del Cafe, the Costa Rica. Costa Rica. Great crowd Unbelievable. Yeah. You played it, Evan? 
Uh, only yeah, one time. I did not qualify. <laughs> <laughs> but how, like the setup. Is yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, 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 yeah. amazing. I've seen videos. Like festival on the side. I played quarter semis and finals in front of <clears throat> four or 5,000 people at 10 right. o'clock at night. Unbelievable. Um, and after I won that, I was like 30. And oh, and you have the January first cutoff, which for people that don't know is like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, like, it's like your birthday, everybody's birthday. Yeah. They're like you guys fucking died. Like get the yeah. fuck out of here. Guys, we don't care about you. Everyone was turning nineteen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, I think some, because I played orange ball. Yeah, I forgot what I came to, but then um, with Costa, I was like thirty in the world, and I was like, oh, this is. Yeah. And then a um, few more tournaments. I played probably I think like eight that year like Bonfiglio, the US Open, and struggled at slams. I didn't really have that. I did well French, beat Nishioka, um, lost to Peliwu, who I thought was going to be literally won the world for 10 years straight. <laughs> machine. <laughs> yeah, machine. Guy was not missing a ball, won two, two slams and final two slams in the same year. Yeah. Um, and, and that year I found myself at sixth in the world. So it was just like this really quick transition from like La Petitas, you know, leaving soccer Lapatidos, um, figuring out that I may be okay, and then and then this ITF circuit, and then I just stopped. Um, you know, the coaches thought like, hey, let's see what the pro life is like. Let's get some futures out. Let's see what we can get to, what we can manage. Um, and I, they always thought that I was good at like raising my level once I saw the guys that I was playing against. Okay. Um, I'm bad. I play down to my level. I do that a lot, but I also play up. So they thought like, let's just see that level. And I acclimated pretty quickly besides uh, Seku Bangura kicking my ass like fucking nine times in a row. <laughs> fucking schmuck just like rolling forehands cross and like dinking back ends. <laughs> like kick serve out wide like 10 miles per hour on clay. I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. This guy's better than me. <laughs> um, and then, uh, yeah. And then those years was kind of finding my rhythm, you know, from like 16, 17, um, you know, playing some ITFs. Uh, did I, I played a couple nationals, I think snuck in like a clay court. Easter Bowl was a ITF in yeah. the 18s. Um, lost to Luca Cordentelli a couple times. Luca. Not sure how, Luca. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I was kind of scared of you. So. Bro, who's? <laughs> I was like terrified of you that you're going to kick my ass after the match. Um, and then, and then, yeah, it was like 18 years old. I was. Um, deciding schools at that point if school was an option um but yeah i had it was one of the few things john mackinaw so i played at randall's island and john came up and said you know it'd be really cool for the club if you can like you know do well at a slam like win a slam and i was like yeah, <laughs> yeah that would be great sounds cool, john like i'll, I'll talk to my people you know i'll, I'll see what i can do but like we you really, yeah, you know, I'm a few years removed from like really playing a full ITF schedule. I had no ranking at that time. And I honestly, I didn't think it was like beneath me. I just didn't really want to go back on that circuit and do that. And, um, but it was kind of, we gave in, they were helping me out at the time. And so at this point, you yeah, so play juniors, rambling. you play juniors and then you start to play more pro events. You lost the juniors points. Is that yeah, what you're saying? Zero, zero. So you went to like top 10 in the world and you went back to nothing. It went to zero. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So after a year, I mean, I played a couple, so I had a little bit, but I remember when I played the last two slams, so I played French and Wimbledon <clears throat> when I was 18, I had, I, I was unranked. Okay. I was unranked in the juniors. So how'd you get in? So they have a, what they call a professional exempt. So if so. you're 550, top five, yeah, top 550. I don't know why it's so close. It actually doesn't make sense. If you're 550, um, you can get into qualifying. And if you're 500, you can get into main draw. <laughs> 50 spots. Yeah, 50 big, spots. Big difference. It was wild. Was like, thinking back to it, I was like, shit, I should have like, played, played a future. And you I played qualies. So I, yeah, so yeah. I played French first. Okay. Played qualies. Played, um, and then qualied and played a guy that was the only other professional example. Was no Bast way. Bastian Maya. Left. <laughs> yeah, a guy, another guy was like, you lose, he loses a point. You're like worried he's about to eat the racket. Yeah, you know, yeah, like this guy. Throwing rackets for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay, man. Like it's not that serious, but. <laughs> and if you're saying that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, it's like, you know, it's okay. We're going to be fine. Um, and then lost to Quintanales again. He was, he was. Top 20 in the world at that point. So that was this like, at the French. This is at the French. It was second round. So two rounds in queues at, I forgot the name, the secondary location. It's not at the site. And then, yeah, Pasta Maya and then Quintin Elise. And I, and I left there and I looked at my dad and I was like, 
like this is we're we're done like this is not happening <laughs> i got nothing out of this like cool to be in paris like again not taking that for granted but like i, I didn't get anything out of this and then like john comes and he's like <laughs> he's like so so wimby <laughs> and i'm like eh, not, no no yeah. <laughs> and and my dad sat me down he's like let's make this like a fun trip my dad was like one of my two coaches lawrence clager was the other one and my dad's like like you know I'm not going to really coach you after this. I'll help you when you want. But it's, you know, we were kind of splitting ways just naturally. And he was like, let's just make this like a fun last trip. And I was like, okay, let's do it. Um, and we left 24 hours before the, the first match. We got there literally. From New York? From New York to London. We got there. It was like 20 hours before my first round cues. Cues again at uh, Roehampton, Roehampton University. You know, I'm playing on court 22. <laughs> Down set points. First set cues i look at my dad and i'm like the fuck are we doing book the flight <laughs> the fuck are we doing book the flight we're back tomorrow yeah, i was like we'll get pims we're going on <laughs> yeah, he's like he's like calm down like, it's, it's all good and uh yeah i mean long story short you know i blink and i'm in the quarters actually i'm in the round 16 playing foe you know i was like the first real match i remember and i'm like shit like i played three wimbledon's two or three yeah, three Wimbledons prior to that one did not win a round at one of them. So I'm here, I'm playing pretty good tennis, and yeah, blink, and I'm playing foe, and I'm like, we got to take down these Americans. Like, these guys, <laughs> these guys we, can't be, yeah, we're like me and my posse. It's like my dad back there, he's like, good job. <laughs> and uh, yeah, beat him in three, and then I'm like, shit, like, we can do this. Supposed to play Rublev, actually Tim Van Rithoven beat him which was like kind of a relief at the time, but Tim was like a good, good obviously player. now, you know, and yeah. we don't know, he's a good grass court player. And uh, yeah, got through that, played all the Americans, played Fritz in the semis. And then, you know, here I am shitting myself going on court one of the finals against Kozlov, like literally shaking. Can't even hear anything out of my right ear. And I'm like, <laughs> guess we're gonna see who just survives this. But yeah, I mean, amazing experience. And then, you know, I guess I owe John a little bit of credit because I have a title under my belt now because of him. But yeah, it was uh, seven matches to get through. What and... happens after you win Wimbledon? <sighs> like, what's the next twenty-four hours like? The next, the next five hours are wild. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> drug test number one. <laughs> so the guy comes up to me. This like old English man. You know exactly who I'm talking about here. I'm just like not ready to deal with him. I'm excited, but he's like. You, you got to pee for me. And I'm like, crazy. And he's like, I just, and he's like, <laughs> and he's like, I just saw you, you know, I, and I went to, I took a, a bathroom break in between second and third. He's like, I saw that. And I thought this is going to be a problem. And it was a problem. So I couldn't, I got to the bathroom. Here's this guy looking at my dick. You know, we're just, you know, we're just in this. Got, got the, the, yeah. And I'm like, you, you impressed? <laughs> he's just like, oh, good. And I'm like, so you have, you have to get 90 milliliters. Like that's yeah. always the number. I like sprinkled out like 12 <laughs> and I look at him like, it's just not happening. Not happening. Sprinkled so, out 12 so, fighting so for 13. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. So here we go. I'm like double fisting. I've like, and I'm also like half cramping. Like everything's just coming around. You're like taking a breath. Now you have no idea what's happening. Yeah. I have Gatorades and waters and Coke and an orange. I'm like eating whole with like the peel on. Like, <laughs> stop, 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 yeah. I'm stop, just losing stop. it. I'm losing it. I'm just trying to get anything. Spinning the soccer ball. <laughs> 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 just, just absolutely losing it and like this is not like a pat on the back but like if you're going to win a junior slam like Wimby is it yeah. they just like you're that's crazy coming from you as an American no? yeah it's not yeah, the US Open <laughs> sucks I think they play the finals on like P12 or some shit oh, like, they, don't they don't play it on Ash no they don't play it on the biggest court no, they the don't I, I actually think they played on the third minimum I think Grandstand was the last one. Maybe Louis. Very rarely do they come out. Like Louis with, is huge, though. Massive, massive. Like, um, how they do with Wimbledon. So they sell tickets for that individual court. So, like, the people that are going to your court paid for your specific court. Yeah, There's only two matches. Fed Djokovic played. They start the match time one hour later than us. And that's it. So I had... It's like a 12,000 person capacity. We had 9,800 people there. Sick. That's cool. Man. Like it's Sick. a real stadium. It's, it was fun. You knew people were excited to be there. Um, you know, cause, I don't know 
I, I still don't even remember. He had an American flag in his bag. He like tapped me on the shoulder. He's like, I got an American flag. I was like, why? Like he like planned this. He like, it was in his head and he like brought it out. It was like a cool moment. Um, but yeah, so like Wimby's very cool. You know, there's uh, you go to the opera house and you have the ball. So everything's kind of leading to this big moment. You know, everybody's there. It's like the whole showcase. You dress up. And so like I'm doing the interviews and everything like that. You meet people. And then also, you know, I had this guy following me just waiting for me to piss in his hand or something. <laughs> and, and then I'm getting fitted for a tux with my dad. I was about to say, like, how does that work? You get you don't... fitted for a tux. You, get, yeah. you go to a small room. They're getting your measurements. They try to give you something that fits to the best of their ability in that time. And we were pushing it because it took me five hours to get out the 90 milliliters. Crazy. Five hours. So, and the biggest worry is that they take, oh, it's just, you freak out because you're, you're five hours deep now and they take a drop um, to see if it's di- too diluted. God forbid, because oh. then you would have to start over. Yeah. Yeah. Luckily, I was so dehydrated at the first 12 mill- milliliters that it was fine and actually <laughs> evened out okay. It was um, green. The yeah, yeah. yeah, it was literally, I feel like Shrek out here. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, then I watched my dad get drunk for the first time in my life. And, like, you know, we're here and there's just champagne flowing. And, you know, we, like, had to pull the, the taxi over in the morning because he's, like, throwing up on no the side. Way. And it was amazing. He's going, um, we had the Orlando lose one doubles. Okay. And he had a Brazilian coach that this guy was. Living in the moment. Behemoth. <laughs> no, but he was a big boy. My dad's like going pound for pound for him. Oh, for it. My, my, my 5'11 Jewish father, who likes to drink like red wine on the weekends, is like putting <laughs> down champagne. And they have, for every one person, basically have like one person pouring them alcohol at this party. Whoa. So like you drink, you, you're like holding it and talking. This you don't dead. even know it's full. <laughs> my dad's like going in. So that was it. And that was fun. And, you know, to have that moment, my father was amazing. But yeah, that was my whole junior career. And it, it went very quickly and, you know, obviously had a lot of success. So it's, you look upon it like it was a, an amazing time, but. Almost know. didn't happen. Oh <laughs> you didn't want it to happen. <laughs> <laughs> fucking crazy. Uh, Mark Harris said anything after Wimbledon? Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah, I, was, I got interviewed with him. He was on ESPN. He's like. You know, he was like, oh, so proud. Like, knew you could do it, all this stuff. And I was like, yeah, for sure, man. <laughs> yeah, for sure. How is McEnroe to have as a, I don't know, is he a mentor to you? Is he a friend? He's, yeah, I would, I would put in the friend category more. Um, he's definitely calmed down more. I think he's like the happiest he's ever been now. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, actually, we're coming up on 10-year anniversary of when I played, when I went to Wimbledon. So... At that point, he was a little bit more on edge and like still trying to be McEnroe. And now it's like a much more calm McEnroe. He's a, he's like at peace with everything. I feel like a lot more. Um, so I'm getting more out of him now. Um, I think it's tough for him with his talent and the way he saw the sport. It's tough for him to kind of relate relay those messages yeah. to people. So like, but like with the pieces that you get when I get little things, it's like, it's pretty good. Yeah. Um, Cause when I see yeah. him. It's only on during slums, sure. and he's like putting players down. Like a guy could have won two slums, he's like, "This guy sucks." He's a, he's a journeyman. Yeah, he's you know? a journeyman. Yeah. yeah, he's like, I can't believe he's only like Aussie. Like, who plays Aussie? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, it's cool. Warinka has like two Aussie titles, but like, nobody plays them. Yeah. Like, I'm sorry, I had to play Verdasco in the semis, but, but yeah, yeah. There's and there's parts of that, yeah. and that's always gonna be because you know it's part of his personality to begin with, and then you have a guy that like was on top of the sport of tennis, mm-hmm. you know, and, and, you know, went out on top, like these guys didn't play for that long. So it's just a different perspective, but like little tidbits now I get, and just seeing that kind of different vision, it's not that bad, but okay. you know, when he's working with like nine year olds and he's like, why do you not put that volley? On? <laughs> and, the like, shoulder yeah. right there. <laughs> and, I, and then like, we'll bring up video. He's like, you have to get low and like, and you have to like push it out on the line. I'm like, I'm like in my head, I'm like, John, like you, you don't even do that stuff. Yeah. Like you just have like ridiculous hands and you put your record there and it goes in the fucking line. Yeah. And this nine year old's like, am I doing it right? He's like, no. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, okay. Slamming the racket. Yeah, yeah. No, but now again, now he's like, he's, he's definitely more settled into it. Um, but he's like a fucking, he's an icon of the sport now. Like, yeah. what are you going to do? For sure. And he's in so much more like public figure stuff. So he's, he's living, but yeah. So you're going now, this after Wimbledon, you said, obviously to get in these, you have to be 550 and ATP. So 
between now and the fall is that the fall that you are thinking of going to school or do you have another year in between so i had uva i basically narrowed it down before french to uva and wake that was potentially a i'm going to school was a really tough decision and be narrowing down. So we were still answering if I was going to go to school. What Johnny Mac say about school? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you say about school? Yeah. Nah, Nobody knows exactly what he said about school. Nobody good goes to school. Nah, he's a Stanford boy. Yeah, he's, a, yeah, 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 he's, a, he's a Stanford boy. But it's still different. I mean, um, yeah, at that point it was still, you know, guys were mixed. A lot of guys weren't going to school at that point. Um, I, I, you know, I was still, I was pretty highly ranked. But I wasn't like Query who won like three challengers. I was in this middle ground. Um yeah, so I kind of narrowed it down before the French. I think French was UVA came. It was uh, Andres Pirosa at the time. And then, and then Wake came to Wimby early on. Um, and then it was... I played a future in between Wimbledon and Kalamazoo. Okay. And sorry to my fiance, but I was on my ex-girlfriend's boat. And I remember <laughs> sitting down with my father. He was there with us, and we we're just like, "Fuck, like, like, what do you feel? Like, is school the right play? Like, and it, and, and we felt like it was. You know, we didn't like. I don't like skipping levels. I don't like feeling like I'm too confident. I want to conquer college tennis if I did or not, and prove myself, and then we can go from there. And that was I was one of the first, if not the first, to get that one year out rule. Yeah, I remember. Um, that. which was a game changer for college tennis at that point. I haven't I mean, used yeah. that rule three times. <laughs> <laughs> I only played two years, but I used it three times. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ninth year. Red shirt. Um, we still going back, baby. <laughs> I mean, fuck. I mean, now it's the Wild West, and I, honestly, I, I really do believe that some of these college coaches could get me into school right now, yeah. and like playing on the team, yeah. like third singles. But, um, <laughs> but yeah. So yeah, when we sat down, I was like, shit. I, I think this is the right play for me. And then every USTA player was at UVA. Luca Corintelli, Ty Kokowski. It was Colin Osmarano, JC Aragoni, Henrik yeah. Wilschlam. This was like. USA to the max. And honestly, like I'm friends with m- all of them now. I didn't like all of them at that time. Like <laughs> Ty, I fucking hated the kid back in the day. Uh, Luca, I was scared of him. Like <laughs> Luca's like the nicest guy in the world now. But like these are the guys. And Henrik, I was friends. But like here was a guy like Henrik was like told he was going to play seven and like did play seven at UVA the first year. One of future crazy. and, and play seven. six, seven. Yeah. Crazy. So, yeah. you know, I felt confident that like, regardless, I felt like I could make my mark on the team. Um, but like, there was something enticing about going to a school and like making that school, like making a name for that school in some way, shape or form. So I, Wake was 33 in the country when I signed with them. So like, I was on the boat. I called Brian Bowen first which felt like breaking up with a girlfriend. And I was like, hey, Brian. And he's like, shit. Like, no. Nah. And I was like, no, nah, I'm really sorry. Like, I just feel this is the best route. He's like, totally get it. If it was anybody, you know, I'd like to lose you to Bresky, who worked under Bolin for many years. Okay. Um, and then, and then, yeah, I called Bresky and he's like, really? <laughs> he <was surprised. laughs> yeah, he's like, oh. I was, I was yeah, just joking, yeah, though. Yeah, let's, let's, let's fucking do this. Um, <laughs> And, like, uh, that's like when you DM like the hot girls and then she one answers. Answers. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, oh shit, like, it, it, yeah, okay, sick. You, you didn't think to get this far. You don't know what to do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What do I do with my hands? Yeah. <laughs> um, but it was great, and it was like, um, and yeah. So what a crazy summer! Actually, played Spencer Papa at the Future, cramped, pulled out. That was in between Wimby, Kalamazoo, and then so it was Wimby, cramp, play Kalamazoo. And win Kalamazoo singles and doubles. So, like, couldn't have asked for a better summer. And then, like... <laughs> Are you still locked into school after you won Kalamazoo? Um, the toughest point... So, you get the wild card. Yeah. And then here my dad is holding a $42,000 check. Jesus. Yeah. And we didn't really know about, like, kind of going around the rules and spending it for different things. So, yeah. the guy's, you know, looking up at my numbers. He's like, yeah, we can give you... I'm going to make up a number, it was, but it was around this range, like $873. <laughs> so my dad's holding a check because they have to give it to you. It was like 42 grand. And my dad looks at me and I'm like, sorry. 
and he gives it back. Crazy. But, you know, it, it wasn't like a life-changing amount of money, yeah. but it's, you know, you don't see a 42 grand Think check all the time, Fiona, obviously. Fiona especially Quali, for an 18-year-old. Right. Fiona Quali just yeah. did that last year at US Open. Yeah, she, but she made, I mean. Like, she, didn't she make like 80 grand or something more? No, it was in the 100, I thought. No. Oh, really? I thought. I she, so. won, she won. She won a she based things on doubles and won a few round of doubles too, I believe. I think More than a hundred. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, I think it was like, yeah. So, because I know Maloney, he was dating her and, I, and yeah. they go through this. So, you know, obviously it's like the Wild West now and there's all this NIL money, which would have been a game changer. Um, and that's probably what I'm most jealous of. But yeah, even at that point, we're like, this is the best play. I showed up two weeks late to school, didn't even pick my classes because it was the Open. Uh, play, lost a double bonus in three, <coughs> literally shaking didn't even know where I was hyperventilating in the first set that the wind was bad. You play on? oh like court 22 but it's like the fans are right on you one of those the fans are right on me the US Open love you guys like kind of but like not really <laughs> um, it's the home sl- yeah, they, especially for you home slam like yeah. honestly yeah, like, York, I, I really do bring out people like it, it, it's not it's not gonna feel ash or the second biggest stadium yeah. in the world <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, like, like honestly really. like young Lou like even <laughs> Even when I play like court 17, like I brought out people for cues. So like they were, they were disrespecting me with some of these courts and it was like standing room on the bleachers on one side. It was like 10 rows, 13 rows back. Mm-hmm. People watching, it was like my third grade teacher and shit like that. Um, but yeah, I'm shaking, couldn't even breathe. And Del Bonus was trying to give me the match. Couldn't even put a four. No he, couldn't, he, he couldn't even put a four in the court. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like going back to my towel. I'm like, I, I might faint. So I literally <laughs> might pass out. Um, but yeah, so that was my first slam match. It was amazing to play um, and show up two weeks late to, to wake. And, um, you know, I regret how I did the fall, even though players now are doing way crazier things. But I played challengers in the fall, which was an absolute pain. Um, you know, wake is unlike UNC. We actually have to do school. Stop. And actually Stop. have to do school. Man, shoot and shut up. This man does not care. No, no, no. Do some more of that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah. you say it, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I say it. Um, but yeah, so like, you know, I'm playing the the um, the fall ones. Actually, no, I played like it was like California. It was weird California ones. I I want to. I don't like want to. Stockton or something. No, it wasn't those. It wasn't Sacramento. Those were young. I from, the, I'll, I'll look back where they were, but I had a like, you play, then you come back. One of them was champagne as well. It was just like. You play, you rush back, and then you're playing again. It was just like such a pain in the ass and didn't really feel like I had a great leg into the school as much. And like, obviously I had friends and I was close. It was fun, but I really wish that I played a full fall. Like, you know, I, I did well at Champagne. I think I queued and went and got to the quarters, but like, did that change my career? No. So I wish I would have stayed. So you Stayed know. and played like IT, ITA. Yeah. So, yeah. And like, yeah, I like was with the team and like, yeah. I really, I really liked the team and I liked being with the guys and I just wish I had more of that. And, you know, again, I had a really good year out of school as well, but like, wish I had another year at school. Yeah. Like college tennis is amazing. So. Should have done what Evan did. <laughs> Evan just played a year of pros and went back and played a year of pros. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> right now. Four times. There's like six coaches on the top of my head that can I'm get not me even, into school right I'm now. I'm not even considered... I'm normal now. No, There's normal. way more, yeah, way worse way cases. Yeah. I mean, yeah. like you see Govananda, like this guy. That's nuts. <laughs> yeah, it's nuts. Like, yeah, that's like the crazy. guy left nothing against. Shout like, out like, UCLA. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> hell of an effort. Hell of an effort to get those receipts back. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Look but yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's crazy. But like, again, yeah. so I enjoyed it. I played the fall. A little disappointed, but it was fine. I didn't know the time. And then, yeah, I got into the spring and like played dual matches and like, fuck, it's like, unbelievable and so and i have a little bit of that personality at times a little more reserved on court you know that's how i was but i got into it at times and like playing acc against uva and like found myself screaming and i'm like Whoa, what you am play i doing UVA? i played ryan shane okay who i fucking lost uh, to in that's the finals. true yeah that, is it true my bad, is it? <laughs> my, I remember now. It's going back to me. I, I, bail up. I remember little, now. Little yeah, yeah, now. Yeah, 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 yeah. A I'm with, late now. I'm with you now. I'm with you. My bad, bro. Um, but yeah, just like getting to know it. Um, you know, and I, and I played well throughout college. Um, had a couple tough losses. I had Labitis that was a pain in the ass who like was talking shit to me. I actually like him, but he was talking shit to me. It was like one of my earlier matches and we split sets. I wanted to play a full third. He didn't want to, and he came up and he said, 
it's because you just want to get a ranked win in college, right? Mm. I, was like, <laughs> I was like, I don't even know what the fuck that means. <laughs> like, That's a Wimbledon, bro. Yeah, like, I, I this like, is okay, yeah, but it's, like, not, probably, it's not a Wimby. I hope I'm going to win matches after this. I think I'll be okay, but I appreciate the I sentiment. I think so, but I'm not sure. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know what you're asking. You sound like you're being a dick right now, but like, I don't know. Um, so I lost 10-8 in the breaker to him, and I lost... The second, the, the second match that I lost that year was to Duke. I played awful. That, and actually, they actually needed that match. Um, I played Alvarez, right? No, that's not his name. I'm blanking. I actually know him from juniors. I feel bad. But, um, the guy from Peru. Yes. Uh, Nico. Nico Nicolas Alvarez. Alvarez. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and lost in three, and they needed that match. So that one I gave up. But just like amazing atmospheres. Like we played UNC at home. I played Schnurr. Like, beating him was amazing. Like, fuck. Like, it was good. <laughs> that was good. That was good. Um, but, yeah, I, I just I just wish I had more of it. It was, like, the different pressures of it, the getting chirped. Like, just so much fun. Like, I remember yeah. getting chirped by people and, like, getting to, like, just point the scoreboard. I'm like, you're chirping me. It's like 6-2-4-1, man. Yeah. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, go to another court. Like, this is your time's done here. <laughs> um and then, yeah, having, like, the ACC experience, played Eubanks a couple times, that one. Like, he wasn't playing great at that time. But, like, it's just it's fun traveling with the team, you know? Yeah, it's so yeah. depressing. And, like, you're in a van. And, like, even if we're all depressed, like, we're all depressed together. together yeah. mm. and I was you just spent, what, one year there? Yeah, one year. Okay. So, I just felt like I didn't get enough of it, to be honest. So, Just I, go back. <laughs> I mean, I'm telling Call you, I text, Billy, I text Billy Martin right now. We're, we're sneaking in. We're sneaking in. Um, but yeah, so I guess I had such a, good six, year, right such a good year at a school that I, it's so tough to regret, you know, not going. But yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Did you, did you think it was difficult to, even as a top junior player in the world, to transition into the college atmosphere? I think because of that summer that I had. The pressures were, were so different, so new to me. Like, yeah. it was 1-0 already when I played. Like, that pressure is crazy. Like, they, like Noah won. Yeah. Like, we already know we have a, a W. Like, like shit. Like, I got to play. Like, I don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> like, are, are you guys sure? know that. Like, I don't know. My forehand was, like, a little off this week. Like, like, the guy I'm playing was, like, not that bad. Like, and every number one on the team is, like, a pretty fucking Very good player. Good, yeah. Like, even we played BC, which is known to kind of be, like, a place that, like, these guys are not looking to play pro, it, yeah. like they're smart and but like the number one player is like sneaky and like and I'll get off the court and be like, that was tough. Like, no, that was too think and about one. it. Like even the small schools, the number one players are probably players that could play for big teams that just don't really care that much yeah. about tennis most of the time. And it's it's it was tough. Like again, I won two and one against BC, but like it's like nine deuce points. And I'm like <laughs> like these guys are like yeah, tight. Yeah, these, but these guys are not even watching my match. And I'm like here, like bunting backhands. Like, you're supposed to ask your boy for the soccer ball, though. You'd have been chilling. You'd have been, you'd have been. And we're playing, the, and then BC, like, these guys don't give a shit. So there's like these fake fraternities behind them, like, playing, like, uh, can jam, just looking over. And I'm like in a full chamber. And these guys are like, yeah, how's your day going? I'm like, yeah, it's great, guys. Thanks so much for coming out. But, uh, yeah, that pressure of like we have a one zero already yeah. is is wild. Because um, I played, I played uh, Oklahoma State with a broken wrist. No way. <laughs> and I and I won five and three. Slicing back, hands slicing or? back. Excuse me, against a guy who I'm blanking the name. Big serves. I'm chipping returns too, which like I don't have the the Roberts chip. <laughs> I, I, I don't got that. So like tight already on my birthday. Remember that clearly. And like still like one zero like in your head. And I'm like God like. It's a lot. So like that pressure, like really when I came out and I'm playing, it, it, it grew like a confidence in me even early on in the futures that I played right out of school that I was like, yeah, I mean, if they believe in me that much, like shit, I, I should start believing in myself a little yeah. bit. Mm. Um, and then so after school, you rose pretty quickly because I know you won throughout the first phase of your pro career, you won four challenges. So yeah. how soon did the first one come after leaving Wake? Yeah, so... Final NCA is set 5-3, 30-all was the closest I got to winning. That was the closest. Two points away. Yeah, thanks, guys. 
What the fuck is that sound? <laughs> <laughs> Tornado warning goes off at Baylor. We're indoors. And then we're staying in a room about this big with 100 people uh, coming up. Tough one, man. <laughs> tough loss. I'm like, yeah, thanks. I just lost, I just lost 50 grand, but thanks. Tough loss. Um, on your mind during the match? What? 50 grand on your mind? It's on your mind during the match? Uh, yeah. Yeah, a little bit. I Only mean, less about guys. the money, more about the open. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and I said I would never do that again. Fast forward uh, six days, and I'm playing a future. Tough one in Oklahoma, probably the hottest place I've ever been. Uh, Midwest in the summer is ridiculous. Yeah, that one's wild. Shoes got stuck to the concrete while I was air in the mouth, like stuff like that. Wild. Happens to you, no? 122. Oh, shoe problems. <laughs> <laughs> Oh God, I've never come back here. <laughs> um, and uh, finals against Darren King, up 6-2-5-2, and I lose the match. That, that was two weeks back-to-back. How would, um, rallies, how would the rallies end that much? What? How would the rallies end that much? Brutal. I hate that guy so much. Brutal. I Four hours, two Brutal. Six. We talk about it all the time, and he's like, oh, just another match. I'm like, all right, all right, all right. what are you talking about, man? Um, but yeah, so I had the final. I've never won a future in my career. So I had that final. I sent me to another one. Um... And then I got a wild card to the qualies of Charlottesville. So that was a few few months later. I, I played a couple tournaments in between, took some rest. Surely you can't lose a match at Charlottesville. Surely. <laughs> well, that was a thing. I, and I actually love Charlottesville. I love location. Um, but yeah, I won, I won eight matches in a row and, and titled. And again, not really understanding uh, challenges at that point. Didn't play that many. And then had no idea. This is when I met my wonderful old and bald co-host of my podcast vacation <laughs> and he that's where we met and he came up and he's like just like an fyi this is like six matches in i beat donaldson i have nobody with me i'm alone he has seven guys with him i beat donaldson he's like you're in this race for australian open wild card and i was like yeah. so mike came and told you that yeah and i was like yeah. you know we talked a little bit before i was like what like what does that even mean he's like it's a race. it counts take two results from these tournaments and whoever takes it like gets a like you play main draw Australian Open. I was like, okay. Um, and then, yeah, I'm so talk about karma. I'm down 6 3 5 1 40 30 in the finals to Tommy Paul Jeez. match point. And it's a controversial call. Obviously, I'm not the one making it. It was a forehand. I, th I thought it was long. I'm going to stand by that. And <laughs> uh, yeah, it wasn't a winner. It was just a normal rally. They called it out, became deuce. Next thing I know, if I went way back, won the set 7-6, won the third 6-3, and that was it. And then here I am, you know, that was, I got 90 points from that tournament, moving up quickly. Um, and then now Australian Open race is on my mind. Yeah. But going back, I, I, I'm not good at back-to-back -back tournaments, so I'm playing Austin Krychek first round next week. Tough. He was playing well. He was, if not top 100, 105. Where, where was the next week? That was Knoxville. So, okay. There's yeah. three indoor ones, right? Three indoor Charles ones. Yeah, Champions. loudest place in the world, Knoxville, Tennessee, with the fucking fans going a billion miles. <laughs> yeah. Can't even think in there. Can't even think in there, yeah. And, you played uh, there? No, just... Went down five and three, and then Champagne, like, brain is gone. Not Still not understanding that I probably should have, like, put in a couple matches, lost to Yimmer, Mikhail Yimmer, um, who was not that good at the time you know was you know shanking balls wasn't the grinder he is today and uh i'm home home with my ex we're like chilling out so at this point you think you don't you don't have the wild card yeah well actually okay sorry so i missed one so obviously if i'm playing champagne knoxville is over tiafo is in the finals against dan evans up a set and a break and so um, now i'm closer with cation he's ex you know explaining how this wild card works and he tells me, like, Tiafo wins this. He's higher ranked than you. He gets the wild card. So here I am, like, rooting against somebody for the first time in my life. Like, hard. Like, we're like, I'm like, Hayden. Like, no offense, Tiafo. Like, Hayden. Like, big. an ankle twist. Like, like, even, like, gunning for that a little bit. Like, whoa, slightly. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, like, not like a grade three, like a grade one, like, not getting out to the like forehand. Like, you'll be good. Yeah, yeah like, you'll be good for the next tournament. Yeah, you're good, not like, this match. Yeah, yeah. you're good two weeks later, but like, you're not getting out to the forehand, like, quickly, you know? <laughs> And he, he loses to Dan Evans. And I'm like, Whoa, okay. Yes. We're okay. We're safe. <laughs> but still, we have champagne. Yeah. And for whatever reason, I guess Tiafo either loses first round or doesn't play the next week. 
So I have more points because of qualifying. His ankle. Because of qualifying. <laughs> he didn't play the next week. Yeah, the yeah, ankle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I <laughs> wish death upon him. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, it's okay. He played semis of the Open. I guess he's, he's good, okay. He's good, he's, he's good. fine. Um, but yeah, I had more points because I qualified for Charlottesville. That was the big thing. I totally forgot. So he didn't oh, play yeah, the next yeah. week or lost first round. Still had more points for him. And then I'm in, you know, I'm just going to a deli in New York with my ex and she's watching me like look at my phone she like knows what's happening it's taylor fritz and Henri loxen in, in the finals fritz goes up a set and then loses the second easily and I'm like, oh, so i see the first set i'm like oh fuck like this guy's gonna tune it like whatever like thanks for coming but like still want a challenger it's fine not really like Kobe twists an ankle. Devastating. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Devastating. I'm about to you know, drive a car off a bridge. And, and then she comes out. She has some sandwiches. I look down. Taylor Fritz. 3-0 up in the third. Fuck. Like, shit. This is it, man. Like, like guy's not going to get broken like twice, like indoors. It's over. Locks in and takes it in the third. And I'm like, and I get a text officially, like, you got the wild card. Who texted you? And open. So I got Cation first, and then I got it from USCA right. uh, a few hours later. But Cation's on top of it. I was trusting him at that point, and he's like, you're, you're officially, like, you won it. Right. And, like, crazy for an off season to change from, I don't even know if I was in qualities. I, I, pro- I think I might have been, but maybe not. So, like, you're, not, you're preparing for a challenger at the beginning of the year. Or you're preparing for a main draw yeah. slam. So it's like and a different world. You went and won a round, right? And you then beat, beat Benoit, Benoit Pair. Pair. He called me the worst tennis player he's ever played <laughs> in his entire life. <laughs> Verbatim. At what time was I'm with it? Phil Simmons. We're on our day off in between. Um, we're taking serves at alternate site. He's like, oh, uh, yeah, it says no, no Ruben, worst tennis player I ever played. And I was like, haha, like funny, must have been like the onion, some fake news or whatever. He's like, no, this is like Australian Open. Like he said this in a press conference. No way. Yeah. Yeah. He tweeted and I tweeted at him. We, we talked a little bit. He, he apologized over Twitter like six years later. He said like, man, like so sorry. I was super young back then. He was like 26. <laughs> yeah, like super young. It's like, our relative. It's relative. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah. So like, again, regret every, you know, not going back, but like had a really good time. Um, but it wasn't until uh, I played Houston ATP. Rolled my, uh, actually went under fucking shitty tennis court. Yeah. Shitty tennis court, center <laughs> court. My foot went under and I, I qualified and that was the first match playing Nicholas kicker and I fell on my wrist. Uh, I didn't know at the time I broke my scaphoid, fractured Jeez. my scaphoid, uh-huh. actually hit two backhand winner returns, broke kicker. Then he gave me one forehand, like annihilated it and went and left, walked off. It took uh, six mo- months. Nobody was by my side. Didn't know about protected rankings at that time. Didn't know about anything. And that was when I started knowing about the ups and downs of professional tennis. Yeah. Has ups and downs. Had some challenger wins. Had some bad moments. But, you know, did well at slams, which kept me alive financially, even through some of these injuries. But fucking, yeah, journey. And then, so, can you talk to us a little bit about behind the racket? Like... I have to. What? Okay. Can you talk to us a little bit about then? <laughs> yeah. So that you know, going back, the <laughs> going back, I was depressed, and then no, so, put it back in the worst part of his life. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, so, no. It was more. Let's go the positive way. So yeah, what, the what positive was. It, what has it taught you, or what has the experience of speaking with so many other players about these kind of things? I think like the you? first beginning was like Jamie Lowe, Eubanks, for Tangelo. The early stories where I was like, wow, these guys are going through what I'm going through. They trusted me. They were, they were looking at me like I had three heads. When I asked them, like, can we sit down? I'm just going to ask you a few things. We're going to just talk and I'm going to record it. And we'll see what happens. And from the first story, you know, that I put out there, the first few stories, um, you know, I just saw that like this was, this was something. Like I only had like a few hundred followers but they were like wow this is like we were getting hits and like people were really understanding this was more and deeper than tennis and then i felt comfortable i was like wow these people are going through stuff and it was just felt like a camaraderie and i you know it was crazy it's like never been done in tennis before and it's like how it hasn't you know how these conversations haven't really been had um and then you know i got a call actually back at the houston atp it was only four months into behind the racket from cbs sunday morning wanted to do 
um, a whole thing on me. And that's when kind of behind the record took off. But, you know, just to talk to people, Darian King, I'm, I feel like I'm close to him. We've known each other forever. Super nice guy. Love him. Like, I didn't know his mom passed away. Mm-hmm. You know, like we're like playing tournaments, playing doubles, winning, you know, we're winning together. We're having fun. And he's dealing with like passing of his mom. And he looked like, like he's chilling all the time. Chilling. Yeah. Yeah. And like crazy. And that's a perfect example because he is chilling all the time. He's always smiling. And like he was going through shit, like going through real shit. And like, how do I not know that? Like I'm, I'm calling myself his friend and I just don't know anything. Um, so there are so many reasons why it made so much sense. And then it opened the door to all these mental health topics. Um, and it made me feel better. And it made me feel, you know, like I wasn't the only one. And then it got now, you know, COVID really allowed me to expand. I did like, 60 stories in three like, months no, everybody's, everybody's on the couch we're all just talking yeah. <laughs> you know nobody's doing jack shit so when somebody says no i'm like i know you're on the couch Come on, no. like, let's, let's do this <laughs> be real yeah, yeah. <laughs> um but yeah and then just kind of see the change in perspective and like seeing guys at tournaments like look at me and be like i'm thinking about my story i'm like what, what are you talking about <laughs> what story yeah, like, what are you talking about he's like B- btr like i know what i want to talk about like i was like i didn't even ask this guy to do it but like, <laughs> i don't even want to you know what you wanted yeah. <laughs> what even are you? But like, you know in all seriousness like it's amazing to like open up that thought process and that conversation to like have these guys think about it and go through that and like actually look inward and be like shit like everything's not okay like i have to take care of myself things aren't going well and i don't feel good what do i have to do um and tennis is like the worst sport for that so yeah it's helped i feel like i've tried to help as many people and we're working on a lot of things now we have a documentary but you know just at least the story is just to make sure that fans know that this shit is tough and people are going through it and then you know at least have these players kind of be a little bit more open about it did that help with some sort of camaraderie with the people that you have on like build some relationship with these people and that sort of stuff like yeah when you see the people that have come on now behind the racket what's the difference in the relationship now than it was before yeah, I feel like like it was funny when I went on tour, like and I'm a pretty friendly guy, but I wasn't like making friends with people. I always said like my friends back home were my friends. And then, you know, these guys are the guys that I play against and we'll be chill. But behind the racket really got to this place where like, fuck, like these guys, like I'm friends with these guys. Yeah. You know, it's, you know, it's. And girls. And girls, of course. These people. Course, these people. <laughs> too long into this podcast to be doing that shit <laughs> um, but yeah like you know, and I feel like once you know now I'm like really close with a lot of people that I never thought I would be and you know I'm not gonna call them my best friends but we're talking and like I remember like Marco Trungoletti like a guy that I wouldn't know but like now we really like each other and we see each other and it's yeah. fun because I wanted to help him break his story about what he did and what he went through and you know we did that I mean you know for Facundo Mena, like these are guys that like I would never talk that deeply with somebody from Argentina necessarily. Wait, ever? Yeah, <laughs> literally. No offense to Argentina or anything, but yeah, I feel like especially those like foreign guys, you're not gonna maybe a couple guys here and there, but you're not gonna get super close with all. Like, it would have to be somebody like. You've known for a long yeah. time. A lot of times, like especially the South Americans, they're very like... To themselves. It's they're their own group. tour almost. Yeah. So, 100%. Like, they're they're in very their in their own world. Yeah. And that's happened with a lot. But then through this, they're like... You know, it's just built that. And I, and I think they've also like... I probably had some preconceived notions of me that are not fully false. Like I have that asshole personality in me. But like I'm a pretty good guy. I like talking to people. So like now they've seen that like... I, I do care about the sport. And like yeah. when I talk shit about tennis... It's because I care. It's because I want to see it grow. It's an amazing sport. And then this side of it is like, because I know I've seen people deal with depression and alcoholism and drug abuse and all of that. And like, you know, a lot of these tours are not doing anywhere near enough. You know, we've started with some and I think it's going to take something really bad to happen. I don't want to say like a suicide, but like I do believe that until then these tours are not going to feel it enough. But I'm going to do my part before then. So. so how active have you been with the PTPA? Or do you know a lot about what they've been working on? I've, I've been decently active with them. I know them pretty well at this point. I was one of the first ones to care because, you know, even though I've, I've had my differences with Novak in the past, <laughs> as we know, <laughs> some viral podcasts. But, uh, yeah, I mean, kind of going back and talking to Vashik and then meeting, um, you know, the CEO, Ahmad. I know Bill Ackman, who's one of the investors in it kind of just seeing that and being like, you know, the players didn't buy in early enough. And I'm like, why not? Like, it doesn't take that much effort. And it's something that's going to be there for us. Like, 
yeah, they, it hasn't been perfect. The start of it definitely wasn't. They didn't have the team they needed. Um, but this is a group of people that are trying to create basically the first association in tennis and, and protect the players. Really, I mean, we have no protection. Um, so yeah, I mean, I know a decent amount of what they're trying to do. You know, there's a there's deeper conversations that I don't want to go into right now of how tennis, I see it playing out in the future and what that looks like, but they care and they're there and they have money behind them. So hopefully, you know, we see some progress. What have they done so far? Do you know? Because I'm a player. I haven't been at that level yeah. yet, but I don't really see what's happening. Yeah, I mean, a lot really of them, happening. you know, the restrictions are in that, I think it's 250 range for the most part. I think some of it is 300 and I forgot what the number is for doubles. Um, yeah, but a lot of it is just making sure... Um, there's lines of communication. They're talking to the tournaments. You know, they're like the last one they had is a priority pass. Yeah, so, so, they so guys can get out to, you know, every lounge across the world, no matter what. It's just making sure players feel comfortable and mm -hmm. feel like professional tennis players or professional athletes. Um, and yeah, I think they know they have to get to a point and they will. I mean, you know, we're seeing what's happening, you know, with, uh, you know, the money and, and the tours and super tours and everything like that. So they are part of it and they have a lot of money and wealth and power behind them. So that's a big part of it. But the smaller components of how do we make the players feel special and comfortable and protected? And we're hopefully going to end up be their first line of defense, you know, when shit hits the fan, which it does every fucking week in tennis, yeah. you know? Let's, um... It's been kind of long. Don't yeah. want to keep you too long. Let's yeah, go yeah. into the last topic here. Speaking of super tours, this video is sponsored by the IPN Tennis Tour. How good was that transition, brother? Give me some credit. It's pretty clean. Yeah, okay. So this video is sponsored by IPN Tennis <laughs> I Tour. I had to give it to him. <laughs> Equality the first year. 22, place. yeah. <laughs> stop, 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 stop. So, so, but, um, yeah, this, uh, if you are interested, go check out the IPN Tennis Tour. And the link will be in the bio below. Uh, 32 draw, knockout, prize money, um, dingles, instead of doubles, it's dingles. And it's going to be about 14 tournaments, I believe, spread out all year this year in Africa with a finale tournament, which, which is worth is a little bit. Is it only dingles for right now, you think? It's singles and dingles. Oh, singles yeah, and singles dingles. dingles. Oh, yeah, singles and dingles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think that the idea is that they're just trying to build a sport in Africa, um, provide more playing opportunities for African tennis. So, yeah, I don't know. That's what we need. Yeah. I mean, seriously, I, like when you actually talk about like growth of tennis, like watching it is okay. Like tennis is already confusing enough as a sport. Like why is a tournament going on there and there? Like it's impossible to follow. But like, you want people to get involved, like they have to play yeah. eventually and they have to be opportunities. So, you know, uh, you know, we had these two challengers and, you know, Rwanda, but like there's not enough there. So to get out to a whole continent is, yeah. it's got to be beneficial to some effect. Yeah. I'm hoping that it's successful for, for IPN. They have a good turnout because it seems like, from my understanding, they're hosting all the events at places that have had tournaments before, so they have some sort of history in running um, events at yeah. a certain level. So hopefully, they have a good turnout and give a lot of the African players an opportunity to play. But also, um, international players obviously can go in and play and earn prize money. I think which is similar to the prize money you would make at the future. So it's a good opportunity to spend some weeks in Africa, play, and earn some money. So I think anything that's going to grow the sport is is a positive. And you, you yourself tried to do something different with tennis. Like, was that during COVID? Like, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great transition. <laughs> now, that was a transition. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but this is the last topic. Last topic. But we don't have to talk about it not, it not uh, necessarily working out, but yeah, just about no, okay. the challenges that come with trying to... Yeah. I mean, we had a few yeah. difficulties with what we were trying to accomplish. I mean, basically, I saw... I came to some kind of realization that the only way to change tennis is to kind of start anew in some ways. Um, you know, you gave that question of who won Brisbane at the beginning of this. Like, Not a clue. Who the fuck cares? <laughs> and nobody does. Yeah. Like, honestly, nobody does. So like when you look at tennis, it's the slams. There's a couple thousands, like obviously Monte Carlo and Ian Wells. There's a cool, some of the other thousands still people don't care. Um, so when you look at that as a tennis, it's like, how do we, build from the things that people care about and then funnel it in a way that makes more sense. And that was kind of what we were trying. And I was just looking, I put on a piece of paper early on of just like, what doesn't make sense about tennis? I mean, we ran into many difficulties because of the reason that you can only put four, but for singles reasoning, you can only put two people on a single court for a certain amount of time. It gets very tough, you know? So you, you, when you're, when you're working through a tournament, 
you know, you have to have players playing at noon on a Tuesday, which is the worst thing in the world. Nobody wants to leave work. Nobody. So when you're going, when we were going through the BTR tour, which we were setting up, it was kind of creating this atmosphere that was fun, lively, music, people getting involved, but really serious tennis. Um, you know, the one thing that I was thinking about changing or not, and, and Murata Klu did with his UTS was a time. Um, I think there's different ways to do it, a little better ways to do it. But, you know, when you're looking at TV rights, when we were talking to these platforms, the reason why tennis fails is because the tournament has to be big enough that people care enough, which they've dealt with, with the slams. But anything lower than that, they're not going to take these tournaments in. Mm -hmm. What happens if it, this match goes three hours longer, it's 2 a.m.? Or it's three hours longer, it's 8 p.m. and it goes into our, you know, our football or our saga or whatever it may be, and it ruins our schedule. Or the opposite, and it goes two hours shorter, and we have nothing to put out. So the scheduling for fans, the scheduling for TV, for sponsors, all of that is aligned, and it makes tennis an impossible sport. So when we were looking at that, I mean, obviously, you know, what we were basing it off of was a lot of it early on was um, people showing up in fan attendance, and it was COVID, and it lasted way longer than we thought. So that was like the initial breakthrough, and we were our first event was going to be Barnes Tennis Center, okay. and California was a strict like we were. Going to have to put in basically is what, San Diego. San Diego. We were gonna have to put in almost double the money to make this thing happen, just to get people out and and use it in a way to get tested on the spot. It was a whole mess, and it got to a point where we were like, just, just we just stopped. It was just took so much out of me financially and and motivation. It, that that one beat me up a lot, but yeah, I mean, it got me to a point that besides like a live coming out, which basically they did start their own tour, tennis needs a full undertaking. Um, and I do believe that if something is created that makes more sense, the slams would understand to a certain extent and actually okay to funnel it into the slams somehow, which is how I see tennis evolving, whether it's BTPA or, you know, we don't know what's happening with ATP and these pictures that are coming out in the past few days, yeah. um, you know, with, you know, Saudi money and, and all of that. But yeah, I mean, I that no was... no clue what that even up. meant, that picture. We'll see. I think they're going to elaborate a bit deeper on what it means. Um, I don't even see no picture, bro. What's good? What happened? I don't know. It's just a yeah, picture it's basically, of them shaking hands with an investment fund saying yeah, that they UAE partner. and they're talking about, you know, potentially doing what they did for Live Golf, but instead working with, you know, already working with, uh, you know, the, the tour besides doing what they did with golf, which mm -hmm. is separate, thread in, and then combine. Um, but yeah, this is, this is going to be interesting. So we'll see. But yeah, tennis has so many restrictions that makes it so difficult um, with the scoring, with the timing, with how many, because you can only put two people, you can't have, you know, 30 players at the same time making a living. They all have to play their individual matches. You need more courts. It just makes it really tough. Um, so did you guys just sucks. <laughs> But <laughs> well, we did love you, it though. Yeah, we yeah. Love it. <laughs> we love it. Did you guys ever consider like a like some sort of team aspect or? We did. Well, I mean, I still have this idea. I mean, I've told it enough times. It's probably gonna get taken eventually. But I, so I'm I'm an F1 fan. Always have been. And the idea, it's the only sport that you can compete as a team and as an individual. And that idea to me doesn't change tennis. The foundation of tennis is what it is the future yeah. challengers all of that that's still there but i think there could be something that you can create a team let's say team adidas a team wilson Nike, team whatever. yeah whatever you want to call yeah. it whatever sponsor you want to take and say okay we have a guy that's top you know we have two guys in the top 25 top 50 maybe it's boys and girls maybe it's i don't know and then they're playing under the flag you have the coaches you have the physios you, you have a training center and you feel like a team but you're playing individually and you're playing for yourself as well I think something like that can come about and we worked on that and it's something I actually want to do, be the first person to do it with like behind the racket and have like a BTR team and see if I can yeah, do something sick. like that. So it's something I'm thinking about. Obviously it takes a lot of money to start out, but yeah, when you look at how F1 does it, it's obviously they only have 20 drivers in the world, but there's an idea behind it that could work and can make it feel a little bit more comfortable. And then because the idea behind it with a team, people don't want to support individuals yeah like nobody gives a shit about no ruben like that's just like what it is but if it's a team with us four let's say and yeah. then there's foe and somebody else and then like okay foe's playing we'll adjust it okay like then you care about like this the guy 250 and yeah, the, then the you future care and then yeah. the, like you know maybe i'm not gonna get the foe jersey 
maybe I get you know the robber jersey. Like this guy's quads are fucking massive. Like, <laughs> like maybe hey, I have yeah. to get this one. You know? <laughs> guy looks like guy looks like fucking Tyree Kill out here. Like, maybe. <laughs> And, and then you go, and then but that's the thing. Like, you don't want to buy a Nova Rubin jersey. And that's where Behind the Racket came in. Like, I started seeing people not even know that Behind the Racket was my thing. And I love that. Yeah. Like, they, oh, did you see Behind the Racket? They asked me, and I'm like, yeah, it's yeah, like, really I, cool. I, I, I was it. there. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> I was there. But, like, people want to buy the merch of Behind the Racket rather than Nova Rubin. Like, it yeah, was just cool, that. Yeah. So if you could change that, then you get sponsorships. Yeah. Then you get patches. Then you, then you feel a part of something. I think that's one way to change tennis without changing everything yeah true uh lastly from yes. instagram from jonathan uh it says francis tf was making headlines at the moment saying tennis is the hottest sport in the world do you agree with this statement and if so why tennis is the hottest sport in the world hardest hardest oh, hardest. hardest sorry yeah yeah i saw that um yeah it's not even close it's so, funny wait to what the, the most difficult sport yeah, yeah yeah i don't think it's it's there's just too many variables i mean you can go through it i mean i think mixed martial arts is insane um, you know, you have sports like swimming. That's insane. There's just too many variables. I mean, I, I hated his interview because the first thing he said was like the ball was like really small or some shit. Like I was like, that was, <laughs> that was like his first answer. I was like, foe, like man, like there's got to be other things first. Yeah, think it through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, he was probably put on the spot, and I get that. But like the ball was really small. It was like hand eye. I was like, okay, man. Like, yeah. But um, yeah, for me, I think the number one thing is how many variables there are. You're coming out. And you're having a different string tension, different ball. You're either on hard clay, grass, carpet, whatever it may be. You're in 90 degrees, you're in 20 degrees, you're indoors, you're outdoors. It's, oh, yeah. Everything is different. You're around the world. Altitude. Yeah. You, you just have so many things that can change. You don't know what time you're playing. You don't know what time you're eating. You don't know what time. You don't even know what tournaments you're playing for the most part. There's so many variables. And then beyond that, it's just like the individual effort on the mental and physical side you know, you look at MMA and you're like, yeah, yeah, you get hit by a truck. The guy is throwing rights. I don't need that in my life. The guy has to go to the hospital regardless if you win or lose. That fucking sucks. Mm. But you fight four times a year. Yeah. Like you're looking at that, you're like, okay. So it's like you, you go through all of these things and it just doesn't make sense. And then I always joke, like I look at these other sports and I'm like, man, you're drinking Gatorade. Like, your sport's not that tough. <laughs> like, I'm fucking creating a potion over here. So I don't have to have a body cramp. And I'm putting, like, it's nine true. gels. Okay, to have this many medjool dates. Like my man's, like, spitting up, like, orange Gatorade. I'm like, man. I mean, the guy needs to chilling. talk about the pretenders, though. You yeah. gotta be the toughest sport in the world. Like, if you're not spitting a sock upon on the sideline. I'm telling you, like, like hockey is my favorite sport in the world to watch. Favorite sport. And these guys are insane. What they do is insane. And it's tough as shit. But like, I'm seeing a lot of these guys like just drink Gatorade. I'm pretty sure they're not really putting down anything else. It's just like little things like that. I'm like... Yeah, that's probably you, something that people, the average person doesn't know. Like that, how, um, I guess, like important this part of like hydration is. Just you know, they just think they think they can just drink a, a power. And also, a like a lot, a lot of the year, you're, you're, you're your own physio, you're your own coach, you're your it's own the nutritionist. There's so much the you have to, that goes into it. Yeah, yeah, there's too much, and and yeah, you just <laughs> like even this UTR event. Like, I am the favorite by far, but like I played for Cena yesterday. This guy's a good player. He's gonna be a really, I actually think a really good college tennis player. Yeah. And. It was, fuck it. Uh, it was two and four, but I'm a, I was exhausted. It could have gone sneaky the other way in some ways and could have gone three. And I'm just like, every match is difficult. Yeah. Like even the guys that are really serving guys off the court, like Small you're, coming, of off, like, you're coming off a match, you're like, fuck. Stress. Yeah. yeah, you're stressed. You're, and you're still putting down fucking medjool dates and like <laughs> putting your potion down. So yeah. there's just so many reasons besides it being a small tennis ball. That tennis is I think just the only, insane. In my opinion, the only sports that actually compare the ones that you can physically get hurt, like all of the fights in sports. Like yeah, it's that tough. Is like, horrible. You know, you have a 300-pound linebacker coming out. Because you now like, you're actually thinking you're threatening for your life. For your like, life, 100%. Uh, it's tough. Like, And I used to watch UFC a lot more. Watching these guys, fucking ridiculous. But also, but, you could start these sports kind of late and you could get decent at it. If you start tennis true. at 20, you're never going to be good. Yeah, yeah facts. Yeah, I, it's tough for me to get away from the fact that you can fight for it three times a year yeah, and be okay. It's like different. even if you're going to the hospital, even if you're getting your, you know, you get knocked out. So you're saying you're you'll get... fight, you'll fight for three times a year for that money. Yeah, you're doing it. Yeah, I mean Jews don't fight, but like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I mean you don't see like 
Josh Rubenstein, like at the US. <laughs> <laughs> it's like just not happening. That's but a crazy name. My mom wouldn't talk to me you know, ever again. But, That's so good. but yeah, I mean, like I always thought about it. Like you give me, I'd be, I, I think my style of tennis would be incredible. And I'd be really excited if I was a 10 matches a year player. Yeah. I think a Kyrgios, Kyrgios has spoken about this at times. I think a Kyrgios is a very good level for that. But I also think like my level where I know I could put my body out there and put everything on the line for just 10 die. matches and just die. I'd be a, like that style. I've always, like, I've always wanted that yeah. idea. But we play tennis. So here I am playing 12 <laughs> matches for against 12 year olds for What's 1600 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> well, well th- when this episode releases, it's going to be a, a week from now so the tournament's gonna be done but good luck good luck tomorrow Appreciate um, it. good luck the rest of the way thanks for having me guys i'm gonna be in dominican too so i'll be seeing you in the nice. next few weeks and uh, be glorious we go to trace ojos and climb the cavern and <laughs> contemplate our existence you know you know the place well i know the place a little bit you <laughs> some mango <laughs> all right no thank you thank and you uh, guys. everyone don't forget we have pro stringer merch um like and share hope you guys enjoyed the episode see you in the next one mm-hmm.